Hi friends, the second exam is approaching. You are already done with the query exam and you all are waiting for the practical exams to come. Now remember, a practical exam actually makes an impression on the main examiner. You might not have fared very well in the theory exam, but if your practical is good, you will never be getting less marks. So why don't you make an impression on your examiner to get a very good marks? What I'll do is, in this small video, I'll give you one lecture as to identify this slide in back of me. This slide in back of me is often asked as a histopathology slide to you in the practical exam. There's no arrow marked in no exam. There were, I have marked just an arrow. When you get a slide like this, the same question is spotter. Identify the slide. Pathology will give you some blue color, some pink color. See this. There's some blue cells here and there's some pink cells here. What is this? Now, this actually is a histology of the breast. It's a take biopsy taken from breast mass and has been shown here. Now, what is it? And to understand in a best, better conceptual way, let me make an make a image for you. Look, we all know that breast is a structure made of glands and stroma. Okay? So, so if I just make this breast, suppose this is the nipple irregular complex. Now what happens is, there are some ducts which open into the terminal areas. Like, look, these are the lobules and these are terminal ducts here. Okay? The lobules and the terminal ducts. Now these lobules, they will then join to the other lobules here and will open into the main nipple complex. Okay? Now this part is called as terminal duct, terminal duct and this part is called as lobule. It is lobule. Okay? Then what happens? Around the lobule, there are some stroma. Okay? There is stroma around the lobule like this. So I am just putting the stroma in a grey colour. So it becomes more easy for you to understand. Okay? So this is the terminal duct. And around the terminal duct, you will see this grey lobule like this. Okay? Now, let us assume, I am just marking this grey colour like this. Okay? So this stroma, as you see here, this stroma, this stroma here, okay? this stroma will be called as intralobular stroma and this stroma here will be called as interlobular stroma. Okay? This stroma will be intralobular stroma. Okay? And this stroma here will be this stroma here will be interlobular stroma. This stroma here will be interlobular stroma. When you know this anatomy, now understand the tumor can come from these ducts, the tumor can come from these lobules, or the tumor can come from this intralobular stroma. In fact, the tumor can also come from this interlobular stroma. When a tumor comes from these ducts and it is invasive, you call this invasive ductal carcinoma or invasive lobular carcinoma. But when a tumor comes from this intralobular stroma, this stroma, when this stroma increases, what will happen to these lobules? The lobule will decrease in size, isn't it? So with this stroma, which is basically the intralobular stroma, when this stroma increases, what happens to a lobule? the lobule becomes decreased because this stroma here, the stroma you see here, this basically will compress, will compress the lobule. So this is a slide given to you in the histopathology here. Now notice this image. What is shown in the histopathology slide here is, look, basically that biopsy has been shown as you cut this whole thing from here, you cut this from here. So when you cut it from here, what you should ideally get is, this is the lobule and the lobule should be lined by some cells like this, isn't it? Actually, this is a normal lobule I am drawing here, this is a normal lobule. Now around the normal lobule, all this area here should be stroma, isn't it? Imagine I am just cutting it from here, you are cutting it from here and this is what you are seeing. You are cutting it from here and seeing it here. So when you cut this from here, 
Okay? So this is the lobule you are seeing here and around them there is a stroma. What I am trying, trying to say is when the stroma increases, when the stroma increases, this will be decreased. It will be compressed like this. And now look at this image you see here. What you are seeing in this image and the other images, the stromal area has increased. This stroma, this pink area is the stroma. The stroma has increased and the ducts have decreased. These glands, the glands have compressed. Glands have compressed. Why? Because this tumor is basically a fibroadenoma. It is fibroadenoma. It is a fibroadenoma. So in fibroadenoma, remember it is a tumor of stroma. Fibroadenoma is a benign tumor of stroma. It is not a tumor of glands. It is a tumor of stroma. Fibroadenoma is a tumor of stroma. Therefore, the stromal area, the stromal area here has increased and the ducts have become compressed like a slit. Now remember the two types of ducts that you can see here. I just label them. Look, one of the ducts have completely, look here, one of the ducts have become complete like a slit. Say, I'll say this one. And one duct is still round in shape, isn't it? When you see this slit like glands, it is called as intra canalicular, intra canalicular pattern. And when you look at this duct, look, it's still round round isn't it and hence you call this peri canalicular peri canalicular so how you remember it look intra is i the duct is also looking like a i and peri is this p this p round this round duct look this is a round gland this round gland this will be called as peri canalicular this is fibro adenoma the benign proliferation of stroma of the glands. The question is what stroma increases? The answer is intralobular stroma, not interlobular stroma. It is a benign tumor of the breast. It can be locally excised because it is benign and therefore it has a good prognosis usually occurring around 20 to 40 years of age. Okay? So this is what the actual biopsy is. If you know the histology well, your histopathology will always be good. So we have brought to you multiple images and multiple slides in the same manner discussing with the histology, then the histopathology and then its correlation to the pathophysiology. Okay? Wait for it and do watch these videos.